This is Inspiring Generations. Hi and welcome to IGI. I hope you are prepared for a great show. Imagine having a child while you are a teenager. The kind of challenges you undergo. The kind of pressure that is put on you. How you overcome and become victorious. This is a personal story of this woman of God who has dedicated her life to Christ. She is a mother. She is a wonderful wife. She is the host of 50 years of marriage and a former presenter at Hope Media, specifically Hope FM. Her name is Rhoda Kidula. Please, viewers, help me to welcome this wonderful sister of mine. Karibu sana, Rhoda. Asante sana. Yes, yes. I know it is a season of, of, of COVID, uh -huh. but we are sanitized, right? Yes, our faith allows us. Please say hi to our viewers. Hi, people. Thank you so much for clicking on the link and watching. I'm so excited to be part of this. And I thank God for such a show that we are uh, looking into impacting lives in the society. Yes. Yes, and my third name is Kedaha. Kedaha. Yes. <laughs> oh, and you can talk to your viewers about Kedaha. So that, oh, Kedaha yes. is my husband. His mm -hmm. name is Jackson Kedaha. We've been married for almost two years now. Yes. And we are blessed with a 13 year old girl called yes. Tanasha Kedaha. Oh, oh. Yes. beautiful story. Mm -hmm. Now, as we introduce, today we want to shift our focus into teen pregnancy mm -hmm. and how you met Christ and then you will also talk a little bit about your marriage. Mm -hmm. I know this will be a blessing to many of our viewers who Amen. are watching. Amen. So please just give us a brief story. Take mm -hmm. us back then. What happened? I had sex. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, number one, um, yes. I, I think uh, most of the influence I had in high school yes. and my priorities uh, what prompted me into uh, getting involved in such yes. uh, because number one I think I really wanted to be cool in high school I really wanted to uh, to be that girl who who people admire who's famous in high yes, school yes, and one of the qualities was having a boyfriend uh, knowing movies secular music having a short skirt yes, you know yes. so I wanted to really fit in mm -hmm. so being introduced to such things that are happening. I actually had never even thought of having a boyfriend or even having sex. But yeah. uh, now after high school, after KCC, I just felt like, oh, the freedom. Yeah. You know, everyone was telling me you have to study first, you have to do your exams first, you have to concentrate in studies. Yeah. But now it's over. So I got a boyfriend and I, I thought I am too... You know, there are times you think things happen to other people, yes. but not you. Like everyone else, when they play with fire, they get burnt. Yes. But you are special. You won't be burnt. You won't be burnt. Yes. Yeah. So I discovered I was pregnant. I was 17. And I was a church goer by then. Oh. Because even in high school, I was. Were you born again or a church goer? A church goer. Uh -huh. Because I was, even in CU in high school, wow. I wasn't serious with God, but mm -hmm. I was. No, no one in church. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, I was very known in church. So mm -hmm. when it happened, it was traumatizing. Yeah. yeah. First, I didn't believe. I thought it's a big lie, and then I felt like I've disappointed my parents. Yes. Disappointed myself. Then in the village setting, you yes. know, compared to now. Even when you talk about teen moms, it's like you, we need now to start interviewing those who are not we are not pregnant. Oh, yes. Because the number yes. of single mothers and teen moms are even more. There are so many. That's true. So it's no longer special. It's no longer uh, surprising to find a girl who was pregnant even at 14. Yes. But during that time, it was really, really bad. It was a big scene. Yes. It still is. But the way you would be treated, like in the village... <laughs> You didn't have a friend because all girls have been told, I don't want to see you near Rhoda, she's a bad influence. Yes. So no one comes to visit you. Your parents have beaten you up and they have forgiven you, but not yet. So you are living with the pregnancy, the disappointment, the loneliness, yes. the, the stress. Yes. It comes at once. So that was, that was me at 17. So how did it make you feel? Did you feel mm -hmm. like... Maybe I need to do an abo abortion or that away that thought came. Thing. That thought came. Yes. Yeah, that one because I was thinking I won't make it. 
In fact, there are people who are telling me because I was really tiny. You know, that is 13 years ago. Yes. Uh, I was really tiny. Okay. So there are people who tell you in the village, you won't, you can't give back that body size. You yes. are too small. Yes. Then there are those who will tell you, a child now, you will waste your life. Like this will be the end. Yes. So you, you kind of consider. Yes. But I always say it's just God. Who then in the village I had a few friends who had died yes. aborting, yes. so I was also very scared. Oh, yes. <laughs> I was very scared, not because mm -hmm. it's sin before God. I was scared I would die in the process. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I think that is in in the in the process. Actually, I discovered I'm pregnant when I was already four months, because it was not showing. I was just living my life, so yes. I started being sick, and then I discovered I'm pregnant. So, even the doctor tells you four months, that's a big that. baby. You can't yes. now start thinking of abortion. Mm -hmm. So, how did your parents take that news? Um, and I, who are you the first person to, to uh, tell that news? Uh, you, in the village, the, the nurse knows your parents, the oh. parents know the teachers, the pastor knows, the, everyone knows everyone. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, of course, the nurse tells your parents. So, the news spreads very fast. Yes, very, very fast. Yes. So, uh, they were really mad that one I know. My mother, I remember she was really mad. She beat me up. Yes. Yeah, for some time. And then. While you were pregnant? Yes. An African. Yes, an mother. African parent. Yes. Uh, so after that, then she started feeling sorry for me. So she yes. started taking care of me. And I really thank God for her. Because were it not for her support, hey, I don't know what I would have done. Yes. No, I was just locking myself in the room. I don't talk to anyone. I was really stressed. So yes. she's the one who would even bring food, would talk to me now that it has happened, now yes. moving forward. My dad is a quiet man. <laughs> Up to now, yes. we have never talked about it. Mm. Yes. Wow. So that, for me, it was more painful and stressful not to be told anything. You know, my mother was mad. She beat me up. Yeah, she lets you know how she yeah, thinks she about did. it. Yes. So my dad, yes. he's, a, he's a very quiet man. He never says. So every day you wake up, you're thinking, this is the day he will call me for a meeting. This is the day he will say something. So that even was more stressful, just knowing that he knows, he's disappointed, and he's not saying it. Yes. <laughs> yes. No, finally you have the baby. What happens yes. after that? I have the baby. Yes. And... Uh, it's also not a very good experience. It wasn't for me. Yes. A good experience when Being you are first time. Yeah, first yes. time unmarried. Yes. yes. So you are alone. When you are in your father's house and you're pregnant, they don't owe you uh, flowers when you give birth. Yes. They don't owe you the best care. Mm -hmm. They do what they can. They don't yes. owe you at a, their presence, at will be with you in the labor ward or something. Yes. You, you face it. So I was actually yeah, I alone in hospital with the nurses and all that. Yes. Uh, so the experience was really, really hard. <laughs> it was. Really, I didn't know. I just knew women go to the hospital and come back with babies. And so I at had, least that made I you appreciate had, your mom. Yes. <laughs> yes. I really appreciate my mom. Yes. <laughs> so I got the baby and went back home and started learning. Now, something my mother did, and I really thank God for that, she didn't take care of my she take, took care of us yes but the major responsibility was mine That's in that um she wouldn't wake up when the baby cries it is your responsibility is. you know every mistake has consequences. consequences so when i take the consequences for you you'll never learn mm -hmm. so when the baby cries it's you you need to know what the baby is going to eat Need to know we used to still have napkins, so yes. you have to wash them. You have to wash them. Yeah, so that is your work. No one is going to do that for you. Yeah. So I for around like almost a year. Yes. I did that myself. I was a full time mother. Yes. Yes. So your school stopped. No, I had just done high school. Okay. So I I was supposed to go to a to a teachers college. Yes. Uh, or it was either a teacher's college or KMTC. Yes. Because my dad wanted me to be a dentist. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be a teacher. Yes. So, because I'm now pregnant, now the opportunity uh, went by. So yes. I needed to wait for the next year. Okay. So while in waiting, yes. one of my aunties came to visit. Yes. And they asked me what I want. And I told them, like, 
the truth is I want to do something media and communication. So you changed from being a teacher. A teacher was just like, now what else do you want? Yes. And you what are the it. options mm -hmm. and what can your parents afford? Yes, you know? Yes. So when I say the communication, then she said, I know a place where you can go. So she sponsored me yes. and I was taken to Daystar within a week. Oh. Yes. So that's where. How so that, by that time you had moved from the village. To the city, to, to Nairobi now? Not even Nairobi. Uh -huh. I came Where from the that? village to at the river Desta immediately. They didn't oh. even know Nairobi. Yes, so I went to at the river. With your straight. child? No, now that's where uh -huh. now my parents took full time responsibility. Wow. So they took care of my child for like six years oh. until I got a job now yes. in Nairobi. Then I went for her. Wow. Yeah, so I've lived for her for like seven years now. So how did that make you feel having mm -hmm. a baby and you are a student? Did, oh, it, did it change an yes, aspect? Yes, a lot. Yes. I actually, there are two sides of the coin. Yes. Number one, your mind. Yes. In fact, the first classes I used to go to and then you have breast milk, you feel like you're wet and then you're like, eh. Hey. You know, you're used to breastfeeding and yes. all of that. So yes. that's a challenge. Your mind is with your child. And even a mother leaving their child is always a very difficult decision. Yes. So at first, the first semester, I was just thinking about my baby and trying to fit in. Yes. Then you're feeling like you are rusted because you were in school like a year ago. Yes. These guys who've joined, most of them are just from high school. Yes. Uh, so it was a bit disorienting. But on the other side of the coin, it yes. made me very responsible. Mm -hmm. I didn't have time for... Anything that is not education. Yes, yes. <laughs> and it's you are more focused. Focused because yes. now I'm I'm in school for my child. Mm -hmm. Like there's someone who's looking up to me. Yes. So that really, really helped me. Wow. Yeah. So th there are two sides. And I thank God for both. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So at what point mm -hmm. did you get born again? Oh, that happened when I was pregnant. Oh. So in that season I, I actually thought of suicide more than abortion. Because I was like now. How will I live with the guilt of abortion? Yes. I'd rather die. So there are times I used to even sleep with a knife. And I tell myself, I wake up and stab myself many times. And then I sleep like a baby. I don't even remember. And I was supposed to wake up and kill myself. Yes. You no, know, so it many I had many plans that never worked. So yes. uh one time I was actually watch I was listening to radio. So my sister was in KU at the, that time. Yes. So she had come home to the village. Mm -hmm. Then she introduced me to Hope FM. And I was really mad because I was used to secular stations. Yes. So she comes and you sees that radio in the bedroom. You're listening to Hope FM. So it was really irritating me. I was like, this station is boring. I just want my music. Yes. And then there's a time she left. And I... I I, for some reason, I didn't change the channel. Mm -hmm. So I was just listening. Then I started enjoying some shows. Kido Kidogo, I'm just listening to Saturday night. They, they have good DJs. Yes. So one afternoon, they have this show. They always have like a counseling session, live questions. Yes. People send questions and the counselor answers. So there's someone who sent like my question. Someone said, you know, I'm pregnant. I want to kill myself. I'm like, hey. That is me, That's you know. Me. <laughs> so yes. I waited for the answer. Then the pastor was saying, you know, the first thing you need to do is to be born again. Once you are in Christ, then the others are easier to do. Prayer is easier. Yes. Reading the word. Yes. So he said, now I want to invite you to give your life to Jesus. And I said the prayer. And now that is when I now made a personal decision to give my life to Jesus. Yes. Not going to church. Not, not now me and God having wow. a relationship with God. So and by the time I'm going to school, I'm now a new believer. And yes. I'm, yeah. And mm -hmm. I know with the what comes with going to campus, yes. the kind of influence there. Yes. So you went when you were already yes, in God Christ. Again, and I went straight to now they see you getting yes. involved in what's happening in the church and all that. That's when now I got my foundation and discipleship yeah, and grew from it. And what a coincidence that mm -hmm. you got born again through listening to, to hope, hope. And then I found myself, I, I actually mm -hmm. never, during those times when I started becoming a fan, yes. I used to tell God, like, you know, you're in the village, you don't even know how a radio station looks like. Yes. You think the best that you can get is being a primary school teacher. Like that yes. was, in the village, that is the dream. That's the you dream. know, teachers are the people, like, 
they are the, you know. Yes. So I know there's a physical desire, but it's impossible. Yes. It's never going to happen. Mm -hmm. So I used to make those silent prayers and just say, one day I'll also talk. So I used to listen to every show. Then I'm like, I think I can also do that. Yes. I can also read news. I think I can, like, I used to want to do everything that people are doing on radio. Yes. So by the time I was a third year, um, I applied for an internship. Mm -hmm. Just like I I had a three months break, yes. so I was looking for something to do with them. Yes. So I was like, I don't know anyone there, but I'm just going to send my CV. So I just sent my CV and he called me. I didn't even know he was. I didn't even know where the station is located. I'm not even a sitter member. Yes. I just applied. I was called and I was given an internship. So I was in the newsroom for some time in 2009, uh, 2010. Yeah, then... Way after graduation, then I got now a job there as well. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. So between exiting university yeah. and having your at least a, a moment of rest mm -hmm. and looking for a job, yeah. all through, mm -hmm. what was going on in your mind? Did you ever look or did a boyfriend, someone knocked on your door and say, yeah. or did you keep yourself? The knock, if people are not knocking, there's yes. a problem. Mm -hmm. you, you expect men to knock. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes. it means that you, you are, uh, you are, you, you're beautiful. Yeah, yes. you're glowing or something. Yes. So. So how did you handle um, that? Age? You were already think in Peter. Because of my experience being pregnant. Yes. And being alone, I. Yes, so when people like a woman, yeah. we are designed in a way that we uh, we attract. So it's it's normal because yeah. even in campus, when I told people I have a child, most of them thought it's a way of um, uh, pushing the men off because yes. I didn't look like I can even have a child, you yes. know. So uh, and because of my experience. Uh, being alone and the stress, I think I had developed some hate for men. Yes. I didn't want men at that point. Yes. In fact, there are actually two things. One side, I was really hoping that God will still bring me back together with that boy then. Boy. Yes. So, when that prayer, God seemed not to answer, yes. I hated men. I was like, all men, I don't want, like... I, I used to be the bad one. Like, yes. I don't even tell you no. I give you words. <laughs> yes. I do. And so God I, God dealt with me. Yes. And I started knowing that there's a difference between Pascal and another man. Like, yes. all men are different. Yeah, so by the time I was leaving campus, I was open-minded. Yes. I was open-minded. Like, I used to have friends here and there. Sometimes you you try you like are we dating what what are we yeah, <laughs> what are, it was yes. never like a very serious relationship because mm -hmm. even that time my child was still at home yeah so my mind was still at home so just like a, a relationship three months two months I think there was only actually one man actually two yes, yes. <laughs> two men and it still wasn't that serious that I can say I dated you yes, know yes. yeah. But through it all, there's nothing serious. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, meaning you only got an opportunity to live with your daughter mm -hmm. when she moved, when she came to Yes, Nairobi. in 2014. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this also brought a sense of responsibility. Yes, yeah, after 2015, a sense of, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So take us through after, how it's a new thing, living mm -hmm. with your daughter now, and you also have to work, you have yes. to take care of your bills. Mm -hmm. How did it look so like? So at that time, you yes. know, first she calls me Rhoda. Because Rhoda is the one who comes and goes. Yes. Mommy is my mother. Is at home. Yes. Yes. Because by the time she's starting to talk, mm -hmm. everyone was calling this one mommy. And then this one comes and goes. She's called <laughs> Rhoda. So after that, she calls me Rhoda, by the way. So at first, she was a bit rebellious. Because yes. who are you? Who are You've you? just taken me from my grandparents who allow me to do anything. Everything. She was seven then. Yes. Then you're here with some rules. Mm -hmm. What? And so the adjusting was really really hard mm -hmm. then it's a new school yes. and transiting from the village to Nairobi is a whole new other another story yes. you know now she's starting to see different faces different she's fitting faces. in different language you know it's a completely different yeah environment. different environment mm -hmm. and you still have to go and work come back so I think it's 
a matter of just uh, having a schedule and planning and prioritizing, yes. knowing what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Now at work, you start giving limits. You know, I can't be here the, yes. the, uh, for longer hours than the way I used to be. Yes. Now the, you also have excuses of parents' day. Yes. I need to go to school. My child is not feeling well mm -hmm. and all of that. So the adjusting was a bit hard, but yes. slowly, by slowly. And I thank God for my sisters as well, who are in Nairobi. You know, sometimes I would feel overwhelmed and say, I go to auntie. Yes. So she goes there for a weekend. I, I, I breathe. So then my family has really, really supported me. Wow. Yeah. So coming to Nairobi, was mm -hmm. it something you had desired? Yes. Or it's the parents who said we are tired? No, actually mm -hmm. it was a struggle taking her from my parents. Yes. It was a big struggle because for me, I just wanted after campus, I take my child. So the first time I went, they told me, where are you taking her? Because yes. you don't have a job, you don't have a house, where are you going? Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, now my my agenda is looking for a job yes so that i take her so even wow. the time i took her it was mysterious because my sister was home yeah i just told her come with her come with her yes so after christmas they just came with her and she never went back oh, wow. <laughs> so because my parents had said no they had actually really bonded yes it was like their last bond so they had really loved her company yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And I know for most of our viewers, they would really want to know your journey of marriage. Oh. Because like most single men, some oh, end up yeah. saying that I'm just going to live like this with mm -hmm. my baby, so with my baby. And some also become very hopeless yes. in the sense that there are few men who want to commit in a relationship. Yeah. They do not know whether the father of the baby will come mm -hmm. somewhere in the course of the relationship. Yeah. So when Kedaha, mm -hmm. I believe Kedaha, right? Where, yeah. When he came in the picture. Uh -huh. You know, I mean, take us through that journey. It came in a very funny way. Mm -hmm. And another thing, sometimes single mothers think, you know, now that I have a baby, anything that comes, any man is okay. Yes. No, it's, I think when you know your value and you know that your mistakes or your situation does not define you, then yes. you just trust God for the best anyway, wow. no matter where you are. Mm -hmm. And another thing, I never hid my baby. Like, yes. if, even in campus, people used to know, whether they believe or not, I used to tell everyone I meet. Like, the first thing I'll tell you, I am a mother. I am a mother. Like, wow. so everyone knew on Facebook, social media, everyone knew, like, yes. like, like I have a child. Yes. So that even when a man approaches you, they know. They, it's not a surprise they get after 10 months, you know. Yes. So, in um, 2009, I also had a long holiday. So, I went to a station in Eldoret called Fish FM. Mm -hmm. It used to be Ruben Kigame Station. Yes. So, at that point, uh, I met this guy. And I was not interested, like, may have gone for internship or experience. Yes. That's what brought me there. So, mm -hmm. there was, even I didn't know the employees because I was like a volunteer. Yes. So... Uh, now this producer in this station, we used to produce one of my shows. Just friends. We are not even. Yes. Not. I don't know even. I. I don't even think she knew where. He knew where I come from. So, in fact, I didn't like him. <laughs> <laughs> and he knows. He used to yeah. have a very, a, a green, a jungle green T-shirt that I really hated. Yeah. He was like, you shatty. Like, no, I didn't like it. So I just put him in some box, you know, yeah. and um, then I went back to school. So when I got employed at Hope FM, I meet this guy again. Again. Okay. Now he's there as a technician. Then I'm like, oh, sasa poa, nini, nini. Yeah. So at that point now, he, there's no green t-shirt. He, he looks good. You know, <laughs> now we became very good friends because... I'm always challenged by technical work. Yes. Even when I, I, I um, applied to join Hope FM, yes. I applied to be a technician uh -huh. or a producer, yes. not necessarily being a presenter. Uh -huh. So even my JD, my work was music scheduling, dealing with software, hoping yes. the night, stuff like that. So he's the one who was taking me through all those things, the cable, cables, the software. So we, we really bonded. Yes. Then we were very good friends. Uh -huh. So... Uh, people used to tell us, you don't go together, and I'm like, no, 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 no. I don't think so. Because my eyes were <laughs> elsewhere. I yes. was just praying and in another direction that, and that direction had not even noticed me at that point. Yes. So he started pursuing me. Now, uh, at the station, we were not allowed to date. 
it's against the policy. Yes. If you want to, maybe you request to be moved to another department. Mm -hmm. But you know, in a station, we don't have another station in the ministry, so yeah. where will you be moved? So at first I was really against it. I was like, how can we get it's not? Uh, allowed and so all of that, yeah. yeah. So it's just, I think he's just one man who never gave up. <laughs> yeah, he never gave up. So by the time I'm even, uh, he's even asking me to marry him, yes. we are like best of friends. And I'm already so much in love with him, I can't deny it myself. Yeah, yeah even if I deny it, say, no, there's nothing happening. Like we know there's something happening already. Yes. Yeah. So he gave up his work. Or what happened? Yes, he d he did. He he gave up his work first. Yes. Yeah. And then it was now official. So at what point? At what time did he know that you have a baby? Or... He knew. Mm -hmm. Like everyone, like the first thing I introduced myself when I was given that job. You know, for, <laughs> for men, you think you are scaring us away. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Actually, that is a nice way of vetting. Those who are scared are already out. Wow. Those who cannot take responsibility are already out. Yes. So you even have a fewer number to deal with. Yes. Because now when you are single and no child or no nothing against, like, no other responsibility, yes. any man comes. Wow. So for single mothers, we have, God has given us an opportunity to vet. Others will just disqualify themselves by yes. telling you they can't get a woman mm -hmm. and a child. Bye. Yes. That one is out. Don't beg. Or don't dismiss your child or take your child to do well so that you have a man, you know. So I think I have learned through the years. I just um, appreciated myself as a single mother mm -hmm. and the responsibility. And I think that's even what attracted Jackson yes. to me. Yeah. So by the time he was proposing to you, mm -hmm. how was his perception about the baby? Uh -huh. How prepared was he? He was mm -hmm. very prepared. Now, yes. most of the time I used to go with my baby to work because I used to have a children's program. Mm -hmm. So most Saturdays I used to go with her. So uh, they met at work. But he, he was Uncle Jack. Uncle Jack, mm -hmm. Uncle Jack. Then now Uncle Jack is taking her to a movie. And they, we're actually not dating. He just tells me, I'll take your daughter out for a movie. I'm like, eh. Hey. So I think also God gave me the grace of trusting him with the baby. With the baby. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. I'm busy at work and I've come with her, she's hungry. Then he says, I can take her out for lunch. Then they go and come back. So he also was intentional about creating a relationship with the child. Wow. You know, the man has to be intentional. Yes. The woman has to be, everyone has to participate. Yes. So for him, he was willing to create and form a friendship with, with my daughter. Yes. Even before I knew his interest. Wow. Because if he came to me and told me I want to date you, the chances are I would, <laughs> I would say, say no. no. But now he came, they are friends with my daughter. My daughter is asking me, Uncle Jack, Uncle Happy. You know, now they are going for movies. Now it's like I have this friend yes. who is so good who even takes care of my child, yes. but we are not dating. So even by the time, I don't even think we were ever boyfriend and girlfriend. It was just, will you be my wife? Because we were so close, we were yes. good friends, you yes. know. So there was, by the way, I have never been a girlfriend. Come to think of it. <laughs> I was never his girlfriend, you mm -hmm. know. It was, I went to marry you, he put this ring, and then went to see my parents. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So by the time you were having your wedding, mm -hmm. they had already bonded. Yes, they had already bonded. They were talking, they were friends. So even by the time now we were telling my wow. daughter, now I'm getting married to Uncle Jack. Yes. Then you're now I'm not supposed to call him Uncle now. Yes. <laughs> yeah. This so they knew each other. Yes. They even even at times I felt that their relationship was stronger. You know, she would get excited when it's an even there's a time she went home and my mother just called me telling me, Who is Uncle Jack? Because your daughter it's just here, story, story, Uncle Jack, Uncle Jack. So tell yeah. us, who is this who Uncle is this? Jack? Then yes. that's when I realized, hey, these guys are really good friends. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So did that also motivate you to yes, accept it? Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Because mm -hmm. as a single mother, you want the best for your child. You need to make sure your child is comfortable, like with the man you're bringing in. Yes. It is not major. Because, you know, you can't make a three-year-old comfortable with a man. Yes. <laughs> no, but now that these are seven-year-old, you need to make sure at least there's a friendship, there's a relationship, there's a conversation. Yes. Yeah. So I was like, 
they are already friends. Yes. And as a single mother, you also don't want to introduce so many men to your child. And I'm sure if I wasn't working there, yes. if maybe my job was different, they never would have met. Because the main reason they used to meet was because he was at work with me. Because mm -hmm. you, know, you don't want to introduce. That's the same thing. If he told me we, we are dating or be my girlfriend, yes. I would really start thinking, how am I introducing him to my child? It would be so complicated. Yes. But the way they just bonded through work and became friends yes. made it very easy for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I just want you to speak to our viewers, mm -hmm. especially in the aspect of a baby accepting someone who biologically mm -hmm. is not the father. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a tough thing. How mm -hmm. did it happen in your experience? Um, I think for me now, because of the bonding and the friendship, it was very easy because mm -hmm. uh, Jackson started way before even buying uh, gifts. At first, I was really concerned. Why are you buying my child storybooks? You know, that's not your work. Because yes. I didn't want also a man to think. I just want him because I want him to provide for me and my child. You know? that's true. Yeah, so uh, for for that, number one, you pray. I think some, I don't know how some things happen without prayer. <laughs> I don't know how some people live without prayer. Okay. You know, I don't know. Because especially when you have that uh, responsibility and you are looking after a child and you're looking into getting married god is your guide the holy yes. spirit is the one who prompts you tells you this is the way walking it you know yes. so uh for me I, I i think if there's a season i used to pray fast and kesha it is that season because you also want the best decision for your child you want direction you yes. can't see the hearts of men it's only god who sees so mm -hmm. you need to really seek the face of the lord yes. you know some people say you know the same people just say prayers you god yes that's the only way we do have another way yes. we, if we had we would have shared but that is what has worked for us mm -hmm. so prayer and respect yourself honor you honor god there are so many temptations yes and you find people saying the way you started i just want to be with a child i don't have a, i don't want a husband but on the side you're sleeping with people's husbands you're sleeping with other men so you honor you honor god and he honors you wow. he, he actually does wow. yeah that was quite insightful thank you so uh, i mean you are married now yes. you have a baby they are mm -hmm. bonded well yes and you are a media personality mm -hmm. i just want you to speak to our viewers how mm. do you manage uh -huh. the influence around being a media personality mm -hmm. you are married and you are a mother oh now god knows how to place people in marriages mm -hmm. uh, i am a camera friendly person because yes. of especially because of my experience and my show but now my husband and my daughter do not like the camera mm -hmm. like my daughter sometimes she even tells me like enough you see them actually running away yes. from the camera like ah put that phone away don't mm -hmm. take photos so yes I, I think that is the balance they help me know there's a time for everything yes and there is some there are things to show the world and there are things that are personal and private yes so i think god just gave me a family that balances me yes. so that i don't go all out yeah, i know yes. that there are boundaries mm -hmm. and if i do this i will I will be disobeying my husband yes. or I'll be doing something that my daughter doesn't like. Yes. So that that putting that line and striking that balance and also knowing that the social media is made up of lies and yes. fake lives, you yes. know. So sometimes we really want to be like that family. You yes. want your husband to be like that one. Yes. Yet in the on the ground, <laughs> things are different. Yeah, They're not true. even what they show you they yes. are. So it's all about balancing and knowing who you are, knowing your purpose, your intention of posting, your yes. intention of be having social media spaces and yes. what you're doing there. Yes. I think for me, I've learned when the motive is right, God just knows how to open doors for you Amen. and to bless you. Wow. Mm -hmm. And also part of the reason why I wanted you on the show mm -hmm. is that a lot of people, including uh, Christians, born again, mm -hmm. believers, who put content out there to inspire others. Yeah are running for quick fixes, yes. if you know what I mean. Yes. So they would want their savages to look, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So 
how what kind of advice do you have for them for these people who want mm -hmm. a quick fix you want many subscribers oh, at you a want goal. views yes you want views mm -hmm. because i realized that you have quite a good following on on mm -hmm. all the channels on youtube uh -huh. on instagram on facebook mm -hmm. and you still remain uncompromised oh yes mm -hmm. um i thank god for that thank yes. you for that i just uh, for me i think my you you have to know your purpose and your motive. Yes. If you go there, especially now for YouTube, if you go there looking for subscribers, you will really cry. You will really be stressed. But if you go knowing, I want to reach one person. I, I this is for one. This interview is for one person. God knows the one person who they are, and the, it, He will make sure it gets to them wow. and it will change their lives. Then you'll have so much peace. Yes. Knowing that you're not called to the millions, you're called to one and oh, work wow. with that one. Wow. I think that gave me a peace. So mm -hmm. I have learned just to do my thing and keep doing it. Yes. Whether it's a thousand, ten thousand, a hundred thousand views or one, yes. I'll still give my best. Even knowing no one will watch, yes. I will still post. Because wow. I know there's a way God makes the content reach to yes. whoever he wants it to reach. Yes. Because there's no need to, of having a million people watch this and they're not impacted, they're not inspired. That's true. So that also makes you handle negative comments. Yes. You know, when people, uh, you're really talking and you're really giving your best, but someone sees something else yes you know oh i don't like that top oh rhoda you've been putting on that for so long oh rhoda you're growing fat you know <laughs> yes. and all that you know yes. so it, it still keeps the balance when you know why you're doing what you're doing wow. because people social media and the internet can be very cruel yes. they can discourage someone yes. so knowing why i'm doing this should be key especially for christians who are putting out their christian content yes. it's not about views it's not about numbers numbers lie yes <laughs> numbers lie when it comes to ministry yes. impact is everything so wow. if one person says that blessed me it's okay wow even if 10 people are saying oh see the camera the sound mm -hmm. the lights ah, there's one who got what i wanted them to get yes. we are good wow. yes yeah. so knowing why you're doing it wow mm -hmm. and as we come to conclusion Mm -hmm. I want you to talk to single mothers, mm -hmm. a lot of whom some have lost hope mm -hmm. and uh, are crying that um, men are not taking responsibility mm -hmm. for the, the children that they have. And some mm -hmm. are, are even wondering, will I ever be married? Yeah. So I just want you to speak a word of hope to mm -hmm. them and then an encouragement and some insights. Okay. Yeah. So um, I would say number one, um, Biological fathers are different. There are those who provide, there are those who um, are absent. So don't look at a human being. Trust in the Lord for provision, for strength, for peace, for a husband. It is only God who provides. It's only God who can give. So if your eyes are on a human being, then you, you will get disappointed. Yeah. very much so even if someone is not providing supporting and all that you cannot force a man yeah. to be a father you yeah. cannot you cannot force a man to be a dad yeah. so trust in the lord and pray and work hard yeah. you know sometimes we also just sit and expect people to feed us in fact if a man is to provide he's mm -hmm. supposed to provide for the child not you not you especially if you know the wife mm -hmm. no you're not his business the business is the child yes. so if he's not even providing for the child work hard do what you can with your hands and god will bless the work of your hands yes. and trust in him yes. and number two don't settle for anything just because you have a child yes. if you continue praying and trusting the lord he will provide for you a man that you will look at and you will wonder if you, you even deserve that yes. because he is god so keep trusting in the lord there is someone for you don't give up and don't uh, look for shortcuts mm -hmm. god will bring the right man the right way yes yeah wow mm -hmm. it was great having you thank you thank, thank you. you so much thank you and thank god you bless so you god bless yeah. you and to our viewers we hope that you are blessed by this interview we thank you for the taking time to watch us and we con we continue to ask you that subscribe share you can also comment. Thank you. And until next time, God bless you.